miracles under the sun. Greece is said to have a thousand islands. In fact, there are at least three times as many. Welcome to a journey of discovery through the islands of Greece. begin our journey from the Pearl of the Mediterranean, the volcanic island of Santorini. Then we head north to Naxos, onwards via Delos to Tinos, and then finally to Amorgos. In Santorini, which is covered by a blanket of fog almost every morning, we meet Margarita and her unique wine. In Naxos, we witness the curious magic exuded by its marble quarries. How did these donkeys end up on a roof? And why? These young Greeks could dance before they learned to walk. Our first stop is Santorini, the embodiment of the Cyclades' beauty, which arose from a catastrophe. Santorini is a volcano which last erupted 3,500 years ago. Today, the crater remains rise out from the sea. Some of them are densely built up. Almost everyone here grows wine, despite the stony terrain. The barren earth is, coincidentally, the reason why the vintners have to work so little. The Santorini vine thrives despite the very unfavorable conditions. Margarita is an enologist, an expert in wine growing and production, and loves her plants which sometimes do not fare so well, like now following two days of severe winds. No matter in which condition they live, they will find a way to survive. That's why I love the vine. It's it's an organism, it's a plant that can really survive. Wine growing in Santorini is only a real chore twice in the year. In the spring when the young shoots are cut and tied, and in the autumn when they are harvested. Actually, we have three problems. It's the wind, it's the sun, it's the lack of irrigation, lack of water. So the vines have to live in very, very stressed conditions. The wine growers have struggled with the climate for hundreds of years, and as such, they have developed their own methods. They braid the vines into baskets, causing them to bend downwards towards the ground from the wind. In summer, 
A roof of leaves protects the plants from drying out. It doesn't rain the whole summer in Santorini, yet nature still lends a helping hand to the vine. Early morning, if you come, you can see the fog. Sometimes you see the, uh, the leaves wet and you believe that last night was raining, but that's because only of the humidity that we have. And that's our saving. <laughs> The ground may be stony, but it has a particular property. The volcano left behind pumice stone, a porous material which becomes saturated with moisture. Because of the pores that it has, it can absorb the humidity of the atmosphere. So the roots can pass sometimes, no pass, well, they can touch, they touch the pumice, so they can have the water that the pumice has inside. So they have some water. Not too much, but they have some. <laughs> In addition, the stony volcanic terrain makes it difficult for vermin. Grape phylloxera, a vine pest which destroyed entire vineyards in Europe more than a hundred years ago, have no chance here. That's why old vine species, which no longer exist anywhere else in Europe, still survive here. The plants are merely sprinkled with sulfur powder twice a year against fungal disease. After a while, if you are all day like this, your back, it's a bit tiring, I would say. A little bit, you start to have some problem. <laughs> you start to feel a little bit pain. So you need to go for massage afterwards. <laughs> so, okay, it's something that we have to do. Okay, we're not working too much, but when we have to work, we have to work. Margarita checks the progress of her wine at regular intervals. Initially, the Vino Santo grape juice still looks like a rosé. However, it becomes darker and more aromatic over the course of years. We do nothing for the taste. We just keep the wine in the oak and we just keep it like that. We just check in every month, we open it from the top and we check it, and that's it. Just waiting. Then for the wine, if you want to have nice wine, you must be very patient. Otherwise, if you be anxious to do something, you might lose it. So it's the same. Just need to be patient. That's the secret. Potiri. <laughs> My grandfather made us to drink Vinsando since we were two years old. Just to have a small glass, a small zip of Vinsando because he was telling us that it was good for your blood. So we drink in Vincenzo since two. And uh, when we were capable of holding a knife or something like a knife just to play, we were going in the vineyard for harvesting. Yet, life on the edge of the volcanic crater is a continuous dance with earthquakes time and again. 
The last big one occurred in 1956 with devastating consequences. Many houses were re-erected in the traditional, more solid dome style. The inhabitants now hope to be better prepared for the next earthquake. The pumice stone, which the volcano spewed out a thousand years ago, is today a much sought after building material. In the past, thousands of tons were shipped out yearly. Then, the population protested, fearing that their island was soon to disappear from beneath them. They achieved that now there are strict regulations. Our journey continues from Santorini to the north, 80 kilometers across the sea, past Ios to the fertile island of Naxos. The god Dionysus, is said to have held boisterous celebrations, feasting on everything that the earth yielded. And even today, Naxos still produces a wealth of agricultural products and is the only Cycladic island that is self-sufficient in food and can even export part of its crops. Out of gratitude, island's inhabitants built a temple thousands of years ago to thank Demeter, the goddess of the harvest. The island's abundance attracted conquerors from early on. The Venetians stopped off in Naxos on their crusade to Jerusalem and remained there for more than 300 years. Ruling families once resided in the so-called Castro, its gray cobbled structure a contrast to the surrounding whitewashed walls. Naxos houses another treasure, a natural resource that has been much sought after since ancient times, the famous Naxos marble. Yanis Carpentini's big challenge is his father's quarry. He would much rather be at the construction site instead of sitting at his desk daily, working on contracts and calculations. If you go on the mountain in the morning, then you don't want to go away. You want to stay there and continue, try to work on it. They, it has something magic. Yanis is fascinated by the lightly transparent structure of the marble. It has a special surface, which even the ancient stone cutters valued. As a child, Yanis worked in his father's quarry, but then, he left it all behind to go and study in Athens. As a young man, I had other plans. I left the, the island, I went to study and so on. And when I was actually 28, I had a, let's say, click. I said, okay, 
what am I doing? I should, what I should be doing is work in the choir, continue the story. And so I left everything, I quit my job, and I came back to the island. Work in the quarry requires a lot of experience, since the workers have to assess where to position the drills and where the weak points are in the rock. The interesting part is that uh, you are small, you are okay, a human, it, it's against a mountain. So you need to uh, find ways to win this mountain. Why do men say when you are under the mountain, you are afraid of the mountain? When you go on the mountain, the mountain is afraid of you. When you see a stone, the okay, quarrymen in Axos say you have to see where, where it hurts. And where it hurts, uh, this is where you need to, to, to put the power to, in order to change the balance and make it fall. <laughs> However, every stone is an adventure, regardless of experience. Even the experts eagerly look forward to the treasures that the chainsaw will reveal. Every stone is another surprise. You see, is it a good stone? Uh, do we need to cut it more? Is, does it have any problem inside, any crack or something else? So, all the time you are in a constant uh, action to see what is what's next, what, what we're going to see. Yanis and his colleagues are working on a historical site. Right alongside, there were marble quarries 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. This is 5,000 years of the same work in the same place. Maybe with some breaks during the history, but if you put it all together, it's 5,000 years in the same place, the same work, people continue doing it. It's more than tradition, eh? it's DNA, I think. It's in the blood. The villages in the surrounding area, with their narrow walkways, were built in the mountains in order to offer good protection. They were not whitewashed then, but were earth-colored and well camouflaged. The reason? The Cyclades were continually beset upon by pirates up until the late Middle Ages. That was a long time ago. Yet nowadays, in the night before the 1st of May, something looms again in the streets of Kinidaros, 
at the foot of the quarry. Because of the first of May strike, all right, some people of Naxos and of this village have been in the US and as immigrants and then they come back. Here the people don't know about the 1st of May that they shouldn't be working and they should be striking. The night before, secretly, they steal the donkeys and they put them on the roof. It's like all the cars of today are on the roof and nobody goes to work. <laughs> In Kinidaros, it is tradition to bring work on the quarry and anywhere else in the village to a complete standstill on every 1st of May, International Workers' Day. The following morning, nobody goes to work, with or without donkeys. Instead, the village youth gather and wait for the opportunity to dance. This is exactly Sofia Manola's intention. Sometimes she holds her dance lessons in the village square. Her students are aged 5 to 18. All have grown up with music. It's said of Kinidaros that the children here first learn to dance and then they learn to walk. Surprisingly, the enthusiasm for dancing is shared by everyone on the island of Naxos, even boys of an age where they would normally be interested in football or in motorbikes. Children who grow up in villages like Kinidaros are already exposed to traditional music in their mother's wombs. They hear it as lullabies and when they learn to walk. So it's only natural that they know how to dance to it. My greatest joy is to see people engaging 100% when they feel what they're dancing. I'm thrilled when they feel it. It's my greatest satisfaction. On from Naxos to Delos. According to Greek mythology, Poseidon raised this island out of the flood. Apollo, the god of light, was supposedly born here. Delos was a holy place in the Greek islands during ancient times for many hundreds of years. After many attacks and power struggles, the island was devastated in 88 BC. Today, only the foundation walls of the city remain. The island is uninhabited. And here is where our round trip ends today. In our next installment, 
we will discover more fascinating aspects of the Greek islands. At Tinos, we trace the feeling in the sculptor's fingertips. We accompany the Scopelites, the Mediterranean's most famous ferry. And end this trip in Amorgos with Abbot Spiridon, 